Fisher effect states that in response to a change in the money supply, the nominal interest rate changes in tandem with changes in the inflation rate in the long run. For example, if monetary policy were to cause inflation to increase by 5 percentage points, the nominal interest rate in the economy would eventually also increase by 5 percentage points. In order to understand the Fisher effect, it's crucial to understand the concepts of nominal and real interest rates. Nominal interest rates are what people generally envision when they think about interest rates. Since nominal interest rates just state the monetary return that one's deposit will earn at a bank. For example, if the nominal interest rate is 6% per year, then an individual's bank account will have 6% more money in it next year than it did this year. Assuming, of course, that the individual didn't make any withdrawals. On the other hand, real interest rates take purchasing power into account. For example, if the real interest rate is 5% per year, then money in the bank will be able to buy 5% more real stuff next year than if it was withdrawn and spent today. It's probably not surprising that the link between nominal and real interest rates is the inflation rate, since inflation changes the amount of stuff that a given amount of money can buy. Specifically, the real interest rate is equal to the nominal interest rate minus the inflation rate, or symbolically speaking, we have R, which represents the real interest rate, is equal to I, which represents the nominal interest rate, minus pi, which in this context refers to the rate of inflation. Put a slightly different way, we can say that nominal interest rates are equal to real interest rates plus the rate of inflation. Or again, with our symbols, I equals R plus these equations are sometimes referred to as the Fisher equation, and it's important to understand that these additive relationships are actually a bit of an approximation. However, it's a very close approximation given that the magnitude of numbers that we're usually talking about for our nominal interest rates, our real interest rates, and our rates of inflation are very small. Suppose that the nominal interest rate in an economy is 8% per year, but inflation is 3% per year. What this means is that for every dollar someone has in the bank today, she'll have $1.08 next year. However, because stuff got 3% more expensive, her $1.08 won't buy 8% more stuff the next year, it'll only buy 5% more stuff next year. This is why the real interest rate is 5%. This relationship is particularly clear when the nominal rate of interest is the same as the inflation rate. If money in a bank account earns 8% per year, but prices also increase by 8% over the course of the year, the money has in fact earned a real return of zero. The Fisher effect states how, in response to a change in the money supply, changes in the inflation rate affect the nominal interest rate. The quantity theory of money states that in the long run, changes in the money supply result in corresponding amounts of inflation. In addition, economists generally agree that in the long run, changes in the money supply don't have an effect on real variables. Therefore, a change in the money supply shouldn't have an effect on the real interest rate. If the real interest rate isn't affected, then all changes in inflation must be reflected in the nominal interest rate, which is exactly what the Fisher effect claims. So we can see here, if we have that our nominal interest rate is equal to the real interest rate plus inflation, then we can just take the changes form of this and say that the change in the nominal interest rate has to equal the change in the real interest rate plus the change in inflation. But if we're considering a change in the money supply, we specifically said that a change in the money supply doesn't affect real quantities such as the real interest rate. So this guy must be zero. Well, if this is zero, then our equation here simplifies to the change in the nominal interest rate has to equal the change in the rate of inflation. It's important to keep in mind that the Fisher effect is a phenomenon that appears in the long run, but that may not be present in the short run. In other words, nominal interest rates don't immediately jump when inflation changes mainly because a number of loans have fixed nominal interest rates, and these interest rates were set based on the expected level of inflation. If there's unexpected inflation, then real interest rates can drop in the short run because nominal interest rates are fixed to some degree. 
Over time, however, the nominal interest rate will adjust to match up with the new expectation of inflation. Technically speaking, then, the Fisher effect states that nominal interest rates adjust to changes in expected inflation. So we can think about it here as the nominal interest rate is equal to the real interest rate plus the expected inflation rate. And then we can say that the changes in the nominal interest rate reflect the changes in the expected rate of inflation.